I've talked before about how plants sense their environment. They're sensitive to light, temperature, even gravity, among other things. They use these cues to determine when to flower, which direction to grow, and when to drop their leaves. For thousands of years, people have noticed that even without these external cues, plants still keep track of time. So scientists have been working to try to figure out how plants' internal clocks work. An example of plants keeping track of time without external stimuli or cues is plants that move to face the sun before it rises. This happens before dawn, so there's no light to indicate which direction the sun is going to be rising in, but somehow they turn to face to be ready for it. Another example is plants moving their leaves rhythmically. I put a link in the description to a website called Plants in Motion, and they have some great time-lapse videos of movements like these. Humans have been wondering about these types of movements as far back as the 4th century BC. And in the 19th century, scientists studied plants in completely dark rooms. They found that without sunlight, these plants still moved their leaves at a constant cycle between 23 and 24 hours. But this did not, however, reveal how these plants were keeping track of time. For that, scientists had to turn to molecular biology. As is often the case in plant science, what we know about circadian rhythms in plants was discovered using Arabidopsis thaliana, a small plant in the mustard family that's often considered a weed. From studies throughout the past 20 years, we know that Arabidopsis follows circadian rhythms in many of the ways that it grows, including the lengthening of its hypocotyl or its seedling stem. But these circadian rhythms go all the way down to the most basic function of the plant, the transcription of its genes. This is the translation of DNA to proteins, and it runs the function of everything that happens in a cell and an organism. In fact, about 10% of Arabidopsis genes run on a circadian rhythm cycle. Scientists figured this out by taking regular samples from Arabidopsis plants and analyzing the contents of what they've been transcribing. What they found was that it follows the cycle of the day. This does not, however, answer the question of why plants follow circadian rhythms. Plants live by the sun since it's their source of energy, and it's thought that plants that move to face the sun might get a little bit more sunlight and therefore grow a little bit more than their neighbor. So it could be a fitness advantage. There is also evidence that circadian rhythms help plants respond to photo periods. Photo periods are the amount of light or dark in a given day, and they change throughout the year. This means they're a really great indicator for plants of what time of the year it is. Correlation has been found between photo periods and circadian rhythms and helping the plants respond to the light and do what they need to do depending on the time of the year. What this research shows us is that how plants respond to time is very complex and we still have a lot more to learn. If you'd like to read more since this was just a brief summary, I've included some links in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to help Brilliant Botany grow, you can become a supporter over on Patreon or you can head over to Redbubble and pick up some merch. Your contributions help me continue to make content while also keeping a roof over my head and food in the fridge. Come back next week for another awesome video about plants and feel free to leave questions in the comments. Comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button and I will see you next time.